In today's video, we're going to learn how to divide decimals by decimals. In order to do this, we have to remember a couple rules. The first is our divisor, the second number, has to be a whole number. Obviously, if we're working with decimals, it's not, so we have to change it. And we do this by moving the decimal point all the way to the right in our divisor. But in order to be allowed to do this, we also have to move the decimal point in our dividend, the number under the bar, the same amount of spaces. So let's try that with number one. We have one and 68 hundredths divided by two tenths. So let's write it as a long division problem. We have one and 68 hundredths under the bar and two tenths outside. So we have to move the decimal point in our divisor all the way to the right, so we move it over one to make this two. And then in our dividend, we also have to move it over one place to make that 16 and 8 tenths. Let's rewrite this without the arrows. So we have 2 on the outside and 16 and 8 tenths. And now we just go through the long division like we would normally. So we start here. How many times does 2 go into 1? Well, it doesn't, so let's move over to the next number, the 6. So we now use both these numbers. So how many times does 2 go into 16? That would be 8 times. We put the 8 over the 6 since we're using both numbers. Then we multiply. 8 times 2 is 16. We subtract. 16 minus 16 is 0. Okay, now we bring down the 8. Put the 8 here. How many times does 2 go into 8? That's 4. 4 times 2 is 8 subtract that's zero so we have a clean cut zero and we bring the decimal point straight up so our answer is eight and four tenths let's try number two we have 14 and five tenths divided by five tenths so let's rewrite this as a long division problem we have 14 and five tenths on the inside and 0 0.5 tenths on the outside so in order to get a whole number as the divisor, we have to move the decimal point over one. That means in the dividend, we also have to move the decimal point over one as well. So let's rewrite this without the arrows. We have five outside of our bar, and 145 underneath. So now let's go through our long division problem. How many times does five go into one? It, not, it doesn't, so let's move over to the four. So how many times does 5 go into 14? Well, 5 times 2 is 10, and we can't add another 5, so twice. 2 times 5, we said is 10. Subtract. 14 minus 10 is 4. Bring down our 5. 45. How many times does 5 go into 45? 9. 9 times 5 is 45. Subtract. And 0. So our decimal point, if you remember was all the way over here since we moved it. So we bring it up, and this is just a whole number answer, 29. So if you notice, in those first two problems, the divisor divided perfectly into the dividend. But what do we do when that doesn't happen? Typically, when working with whole numbers, we can write this as a remainder. But when dividing with decimals, remainders can get a little tricky. So instead, we can add zeros all the way to the right of the decimal point. Remember, in any number, you can add a zero all the way to the right of a decimal without changing its value. So let's try that with number three. We have 13 and 2 tenths divided by 5 tenths. So let's rewrite this first as a long division problem. So we have 13 and 2 tenths under the bar divided by 5 tenths outside. So first we have to make the divisor a whole number, and we do this by moving the decimal point over 1, so it becomes 5, and we have to move the decimal in the dividend over 1 as well, so this becomes 132. So let's rewrite that without the arrows. We have 132 under the bar divided by 5, and now let's go through our long division problem. So how many times does 5 go into 1? doesn't so we move over to the 3 and we use 13 so 5 into 13 that goes in twice 
2 times 5 is 10. Now we subtract 13 minus 10 equals 3. Bring down our 2, 32. How many times does 5 go into 32? 6. 6 times 5 is 30. Subtract, and we're left with 2. Now we don't have a number to bring down, but remember, our decimal point is technically here, so we can add a 0 after, without changing the value, it's still 132. So now if we bring that 0 down, we have 20. How many times does 5 go into 20? 4. We have to bring our decimal point straight up. 4 times 5 is 20. Subtract, and you're left with 0. So our answer is 26 and 4 tenths. By adding that extra zero after the decimal point in our dividend, we were able to get an answer without a remainder. Let's try number four. We have six and thirty-three hundredths divided by two tenths. So let's rewrite this as a long division problem. We have six and 33 hundredths under the bar divided by 2 tenths outside. So let's re move our decimal point, move that over one place. So we have to move it in our dividend over one place. So we're left with 63.3 divided by 2. Let's rewrite this without those arrows. So we're going to write it over here. We have 63 and 3 tenths divided by 2. So how many times does 2 go into 6? 3 times. 3 times 2 is 6. Subtract. We're left with 0. Bring down our 3. How many times does 2 go into 3? Once. 1 times 2 is 2. Subtract there. We're left with 1. We can bring down our 3. 13. How many times does 2 go into 13? Goes in 6 times. Don't forget to bring your decimal point up. 6 times 2 is 12, and we're left with 1 here. But remember, we can add a 0 to the furthest right of a decimal point without changing the value. So we add a 0 after the 3. So now we can bring down our 0. We have 10. How many times does 2 go into 10? 5 times. 5 times 2 is 10. Tracked. And we're left with 0. So we get a clean cut zero again, and our answer is 31 and 65 hundredths. For these last two problems, if you'd like to pause the video and try them on your own, and then follow along with me as I go through the solution, you can do that now. So let's try number five. We have four and 62 hundredths divided by three tenths. So let's first rewrite this as a long division problem. So we have four and 62 hundredths divided by 3 tenths. Let's move our decimal point in our divisor. And we also have to move it over 1 in our dividend. So let's rewrite this without those arrows. So we have 46 and 2 tenths divided by 3. Now let's go through our long division problem. So how many times does 3 go into 4? Once. 1 times 3 is 3, tracked, 4 minus 3, that's a 3 there, 4 minus 3 is 1, bring down our 6, how many times is 3 going to 16, 5, 5 times 3 is 15, 16 minus 15 is 1, bring down our 2, how many times is 3 going to 12, 4, don't forget to bring your decimal point up, 4 times 3 is 12, subtract, and 0. So our answer is 15 and 4 tenths. Let's try number 6. We have 9 and 27 hundredths divided by 5 tenths. So first step, rewrite as a long division problem. We have 9 and 27 hundredths on the inside. 5 tenths on the outside. Second step, move our decimal point in our divisor. Let's move it over 1. And then we have to move it over 1 in our dividend as well. 
So let's rewrite those without the arrows. So we're left with 92 and 7 tenths under the bar. And outside we have a 5. So now let's go through our long division. How many times does 5 go into 9? That would be once. 1 times 5 is 5. Subtract. 9 minus 5 is 4. We can bring down our 2. So we have 42. 5 goes into 42 8 times. 8 times 5 is 40. Subtract again. We're left with 2. Bring down our 7. 27. 5 goes into 27 5 times. Don't forget to bring up your decimal point. 5 times 5 is 25. 27 minus 25 is 2. Now remember, we can add a 0 to the right of the decimal, so we can add a 0 over here to bring down. So we bring that down. We have 20. 5 goes into 24 times. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 minus 20, I'm going to put this over here, is 0. And we have a clean cut 0 at the end, so our answer is 18 and 54 hundredths. Hopefully this video helped you guys have a better understanding of how to divide decimals by decimals. Thanks for watching.